Welcome, everybody, to That One Goosebumps podcast. So tonight I'm joined with Bumps of the Night, Josh Reviews Incorporated, Reviewer Beware, and Goosebumps Completionist. And tonight we're going to be reviewing How I Got My Shrunken Head, which was picked by Goosebumps Completionist. Yay! So, so basically this book starts off with this uh, guy, Mark, who is, he loves like the jungle aesthetic and fact. Yeah, he's all about the jungle, and he acknowledges that his aunt is in a Southeast Asian country in the jungles, you know, studying stuff. For his birthday, he's delivered this particular, like, small, like, little shrunken, like, green head. It looks almost, like, triple and old, but he loves it, and eventually, through one series or another, basically told that he is allowed to go look for his aunt who is apparently in some kind of trouble and he tends to discover that for some reason he has weird things that he's capable of doing as he has different encounters in the jungle it's a very unique goosebumps book to say the least very true all right completionist tell us a bit about your opinion of the book i Okay, so I kind of love and hate this book at the same time. I love the imagination and the imagery that went into this book, but Mark as a character is so whiny, it's almost cringing at sometimes, and I had to pause after a couple chapters and take a few hour breaks just from dealing with him. (laughs) But (laughs) nonetheless, nonetheless, the story, you know, dealing with uh, Dr. What is it, Hollings, and dealing with Carolyn, uh, Caroline, girl. Yeah, his daughter, I mean, Kareem. It, 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 it kind of meandered for a good amount of the book. There, there was a part in the book where three chapters were designated to him in a stand pit. Be right back. And, and that's what those three chapters were about. So, like, you know, the imagery was there, but I think the story was kind of meandering throughout the most majority of the book. And then at the end, it finally kicked up, but it kind of fizzled at the same time. But I, I really did enjoy the atmosphere in this book for what it was. What's back, Ego? Oh, I'm back. Okay. Uh, I really liked the book when I first read it when I was, like, what, 10? But are we reading it again? We actually didn't read this one this time. My God. Uh, I feel bad. I, I, I really did like this book. Um, but as Complete says, uh, Mark is just so irritable as a character that I just started to hate him. I mean, like, come on. Dude, how whiny can one person be? I, I, I like the story. Again, I like the magic side of it. No, I do prefer the episode more. Yeah. I like you, Dad! <laughs> <laughs> like you too, son. Yay! <laughs> Josh, why suck, everybody? Anyway. <laughs> you wakened me from my slumber in the peanut butter jar! What do you need? <laughs> Brandon, did you go yet? Sorry, I went and grabbed a Dr. Peppy. Tell us thoughts now that we've eliminated y Sock from um, the podcast. There's I no- like the book. I liked how weird it was, like, compared to most of the other books in the series. Like, it's very out there, and it's got different ideas than, you know, most of the series. I can see why everyone else says, you know, he is whiny, and I agree. I remember very fondly when I first read this book when I was a little kid that I... I was just like, oh my god, would you shut up, kid? Like, you are so annoying. (laughs) Alright, I have so many issues with this book. For starters, let's go over some good things here. Cover art, awesome. Classic Jacobus. I don't like the obsession with the jungle. Like, it's okay to be based around the jungle. I've read other books of this novella style based around jungles, and it's like, we get it. You have a boner for Earth, like the Earth, the jungle. We get it. I don't like how the mom was so nonchalant to just be like, oh, hey... Unexpected visitor, why don't you come stay the night and then you can take my son to Bangladesh or Balali land? Where the fuck he went? Okay, even in the 90s, where things weren't so sketch, we didn't have Facebook to identify, you're going to sit here and tell me. The mom just is like, yes, stranger I've never met, take my son to a continent I cannot access without planes. In this book, it says that it was the plane ride was so long, they showed three movies back to back. Like, What? Did they not stop for fuel? It's a long-ass ride. I guess. I don't know. I don't... I'm indifferent about this book. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. Yeah. I'm right there with 
I'll give my spin. First off, I'll acknowledge this was one of my favorite, favorite Goosebumps books as a kid. And first off, how it came back to his adult, it still holds up pretty well. First off, on the thing about Mark, I actually don't think he's that bad. I mean, I've read every Monster Blood, You Can't Scare Me, Go Eat Worms, both Mummy books, and Curse of Camp Cold Lake. And all those protagonists are so much worse. Like, yeah. it's like this very, like, space cadet like, kind of, like, almost neurotic protagonist. I actually like that we have, like, this protagonist that's, like, engulfed in neuroticism. As for the rest of the book, um, here's where it succeeded. I think, I think, actually, Dalton, what you hate about the whole jungle obsessiveness, I actually embrace the fact that it's, like, a borderline OCD thing with this book. Okay. On top of that, uh, yeah, semantics of always oh, mom's like, yeah, take my child to the jungle, but that happens in a lot of books. We just talked about that with horror and Camp Jelly Jam. I guess I can kind of let it slide. So, right. there are areas this book comes up short. First off, jungle magic is a bit too ambiguous for my liking, and I like the whole setup of uh, Dr. Hollings and all the family are actually like these evil, like insanely twisted scientists. You give us your jungle magic but because I, we're scientists. That's <laughs> predictable. I was just waiting for the turn, but putting this 12 year old kid with this insane jungle magic in a position in the middle of the jungle, I actually really liked it. And when Arlstein got creative with the tiger, the quicksand, the red ants, uh, I very much felt like he embraced his exotic side with this one and what I really like is the book before this you get that one eventually Arl Stein had a chance to set up this super awesome adventure and he shit the bed right at the end of it he stuck with his book and stayed consistent I think it's not a perfect book and I don't know if I love it like I did as a kid I would still go as far as to say this is still on better grounds with me I almost want to say I like chicken chicken better than this. You say something so controversial yet so brave. I almost <laughs> agree because chicken chicken cold will live forever. Bok bok motherfucker. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. I kind of want to say I like piano lessons can be murder more than this. Ugh, more. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. That book is awesome. Ooh, that, that's a what the fuck slight, are you talking about? The whole book's given away on the cover. I can see chicken chicken, but piano lessons. I, I don't know. No, 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 no. There's actually some pretty good I, I, I think I'm more in the positive. I think I'm more in the positive this one than most because, like, when Arnstein writes around, like, a borderline, like, OCD obsession, I feel like he makes a good play on it. And I don't know, the whole fact that they eventually fall in and they just shrink, ironically, to their doom at the end because of this weird jungle magic is really good. Where I think this book came up a bit short is they explained and put their, like, explanation and exposition towards the wrong areas a little bit like i think we need a little more on the jungle magic but overall i do not have a negative opinion on this that's the thing though in the episode they shrunk in the juice in the book they shrunk because mark was all like kalia well we'll get to the episode because i have I, I have some all right so do we want to rate but, the uh, book and then get into the episode unless before i do that does anybody else have anything else to say about this book Let's go in order, starting with Completionist. I do, I do too. Let's start with Completionist and we'll right, go to Wasaki. So, okay, so I don't think I got into the reasons why I hate it so much. Well, it's, it, I don't really hate it, but I love it. it mm -hmm. It's, like I said, it's meandering. But, you know, in, in the strong points of the story, where it takes you into, into the atmosphere of the jungle, it, it gives you the, their. Uh, you know, their neurotic feel of Mark, even though it's borderline obsessive, and you can tell that R.L. Stein is writing in an obsessive way, that ending just fizzled the whole book. Yeah, the, 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 the yeah. Thing good at that. Wait, the wait, let ending. me tell them about the tiger. <laughs> They're great! <laughs> and I, I, think I, think the I said, I said where, where I think the episode did it better is that it ties, it, even though it has nothing to do with the book in the beginning, it kind of ties it all 
full circle and it lets you know what happened to the three of the people who were shrunk. And it kind of gives a, a better ending than the book did. Yeah, we'll talk right. about it in a second. Uh, Brandon, what's your... You had something now? Yeah. Nice strong water. Sponsor me. All right. All right. Josh. Um, in the ra- uh, I'm going to give this a, a rating. Uh, I would give it... What? I'll give it a five. All right. Uh, Irby? I'm going to go a little nicer, to be honest. I'm going to give this book an eight out of ten. Okay. Wow. It's still mostly 16s. Brandon? I'm also going to... I'm going to go with a 6. Completionist? I'm going to give it a 6. A 6 for me is not good, but not bad. Yeah. So that's a it's pretty, just kind of in the middle. Yeah, it's about to say yeah. <laughs> Josh, you stole my number. I was going to say 5, and I don't want to say 5. I'm going to say 5. <laughs> I can see the criticism for it, certainly, but I don't know. I don't think he's one of the very worst Goosebumps protagonists. Like, there are books that are, the protagonist is far worse. I just want to see how the first one ones I listed. Yeah, I I agree. But have you ever just, like, read a book? You ever just read a book and not connected with it? I the mid-tier, to be honest, but that's just me. Yeah. I mean, personally, have you ever just read a book and, like, you know it's not bad, but you're not connecting with it, you're just like... Okay. Uh, um, there's a few Goosebumps books like that in the series that felt that way. So, yeah. overall, the average score for all of us is a six. It got a six. So That's probably fair. I mean, it seems like we're very divisive on this one, but I don't think it's a terrible Goosebumps book at all. Yeah, but I, generally, I don't think it's terrible. I just don't like Mark, and I don't like the ending in the book. So, that's what got it down for me. But if Mark so, was into anime or had a sister in the anime, you would have scored that bitch a nine. Don't. Shut up. Don't. <laughs> My sister no. was watching anime while I wanted to watch the Discovery Jungle program. Josh was like, holy fuck, best book ever written. Thank you, Arl Stein. <laughs> <laughs> He's a cultured gentleman. You don't mean to be mean or anything, but I thought Mark's sister Jessica was less annoying than Mark. I agree. And, that, and that's how I know I didn't like Mark. I, I don't know. I just, I just didn't oh, when she the scratched character. the shrunken head like a dick? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a red-headed little fuck. It's like, you monster. Why? <laughs> Fine. Um, I'll start off first. Uh, um, so the episode is like this. There's almost like a traits and balances. Like, Mark was one of the best parts of the episode. Yeah. He was this weird, neurotic space cadet. And I'm like, this kid is a dumbass. He's perfect. Mark is he, essentially it felt like what would happen if you put Crash Bandicoot in the Goosebumps episode. It was great. Oh, yeah. you see, I, I read it. <laughs> I just kept thinking oh, it was I'm Little Wasaki. I like how they how they actually explained what jungle magic is because I was very critical of that in the book. Yeah. Um, and honestly, that went well. Uh, the twist they did at the end was great. Like, I the love the twist. The twist was extremely well it, executed. Like, the trade off. The twist in the end of the story is perfect for what yes. I think they did. They killed him with the twist. Yeah. Yes. The bad news is, even though it was funny, all the stuff with all the possessed dudes that seem to be Asian and the fake Elvis. Racist. It was kind of crazy. Hey, it was funny. Watch though. your language there, boy. The, 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 the no, Elvis was um, the best part of the episode. If you don't. I will end you. I will find you, and I will kill you. <laughs> Herbie, Herbie, let's tell them the ending for the people who haven't seen the episode. Or, or Hold on. The episode. Before we get there, though, that's the ending. Oh, reading this oh, book, the only thing they'll shrink and let not pretend that they didn't just jump in and they it, they didn't even make an effort to look like they were pushed in. You saw that scene, like come on. <laughs> yeah. The twist is way better. Yeah. Hold on, though. Elvis was the best part. Though. You're saying Elvis was, was the best part, but was his, was his mom not, like, MILF level walking around in a towel? No, she was. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm pretty sure this this episode inspired a lot of young masturbation. Just... Give them this. They went all out with this. Uh-huh. The effort was certainly noticeable. They, I don't know. They didn't... Always... Personally, I always thought they never held like, back on this Elvis cosplay, but, you know... 
the effort would certainly exist. Oh yeah, they Wait, gave it the Kalia. Which one your guys' opinion? I always thought that the main character in the episode was like Fry from Futurama. He's just oh, that. Oh yes. I can see that. Reading this book though, I imagine like, like a young Josh Wasaki walking around like a dumbass just taking it. What? Yo! What? I just realized who Mark is. <laughs> guys, in terms of personality, you can't tell me Mark and how what? I got my shrunken head is not Kingdom Hearts 1 Sora. Tell me I'm wrong. Bro. No, it's not true! <laughs> what? <laughs> Jesus. I'm lost. <laughs> Let's rate the episode. <laughs> All right, hold on. I, I want to say I want to say something about the episode. Yeah, let's get it, man. Address. Let's look at Mark's bachelor pad, aka the jungle layer that was in this episode. It was so overly done. I laughed my ass off. Like, the this entire time. To be fair, the entire when, episode with two part felt overly done, then, but it worked. Uh, and then the mom, the mom, is trying to get him out of the house. So to get laid! To time with her boyfriend. That was her excuse. They fucked she on his bed, changed my mind. <laughs> Can we think about the fact that they actually showed a scene where, like, Mark is talking about all this jungle shit with his mom's boyfriend, that you see a scene of him just leaving. <laughs> gone. That was so hilarious! Let's get... <laughs> you know what oh you did. God. You know. <laughs> but, but but I will say, the shrunken, the shrunken head in the episode looks just like the book cover. I mean, yeah. Props department had it on. Yeah, great job on The actress who played Kareem is the same girl from Stand of the Basement. She plays Margaret. They replaced Ernesto with an Elvis impersonator from the book. Come on. Ernesto 10 out of 10. Best seen? episode. The Elvis impersonator? <laughs> 10 out of 10. Thank you. I mean, Thank you very much. Baladora. But I can't... Yeah, Baladora is like in the South Pacific or something like that. Either way, we need down to the nitty gritty. This book was not as good as they promised and R.L. Stein really needs to clean up his shit. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I mixed them up. They're both about jungles. What do you know? It's not like they stole it or something. Real talk, The Curse okay, of the Jungle was better. the episode now. Let's start with Irby. Rate Let's the episode. The Goosebumps show late game was weak as hell. For the most part, a lot of stickers came in the last two seasons, but, you know, they did a lot of needlessly stupid things, but the things they fixed that were flaws in the book were really good, and again, Mark was literally perfect in the episode. I'm going to give the episode, I think an eight and a half is warranted. Eight and a half out of ten. Completionist? I'm going to go on eight and a half as well. Yeah, because you're, you're, you're Goosebumps Completionist. Josh oh, reviews Fagame. Yeah. I didn't know this was the Josh I podcast. Me, my bad. Sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't know this was Hot Dogs oh by God. the Hour. Excuse the fuck out of me. <laughs> Alright. So, I'll <laughs> chop, chop. Money is, you know, tight as money. I'll give it this. The cinematography, it felt like an actual two part movie, like for a TV show. Great, great acting. I actually enjoyed the episode more with the changes they made. They had a better ending, had a more cohesive plot, made me actually enjoy the story. So, I'd actually give this a 9. You know, really enjoyed it. Brandon? So I guess I'm supposed to go with Josh or me, I'll go with an 8.5. Okay. Any reason why? It didn't need to happen. Come on, Josh. Come on. Mm, time is money, and money was, is time. was funny. Cringetopia at its finest, exactly. Brandon Slime. I'm going to be that guy and just give it a, a flat eight. Um, it was one of the better episodes. I personally think the books translated better into episode than it did in book. I was more enthralled with yeah. the episode as a whole than I was with the book. Okay. Uh, you can spit yeah, Jungle at me a thousand times, but when I actually see Jungle, okay, versus Jungle, 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 Kalia. Are we just reaching the conclusion that story was always one of those that was probably better put to be like an episode anyway? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. Overall, this yeah. episode scored an eight. Cool. Cool. Okay. So. Definitely mean uh, material level episode. That's for certain. Definitely. Yeah. Let's talk about this, Brandon. What's our next book? Because it's your choice. After you, it's going to be Irby, me. 
then Wasaki, and then we make it back around to Completionist. Alright, so the next book we're going to be doing is One Day at Horrorland. Episode 22! On, we're going to follow this rotation, unless somebody like Jeremy or another guest star like Saw Guy Podcast comes back in. Can I just say something just real quick? Uh, can, I get a, can I get an L in the chat for uh, Saw Guy Podcast for nothing he gets the buckets anymore? <laughs> So, uh, oh, rest of Russia, soldier. Soviet Russia anthem intensifies. Guys, <laughs> I can do F, that. Press F to pay respects, you know. Press oh, F to pay right. respects. I will mention this. I'm not going to go into full detail, but as a group here, we have discussed about doing another Goosebumps collab. So, keep an eye out for some kind of trailer or something when I get bored. I've got a whole week to myself here thanks to quarantine, so I'll get to it. With that being said, this has been that one Goosebumps podcast. Thank you. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe. Our channels are down in the comments because I edit Brandon's channel, so I know they're down there. So, uh, why don't you come over here and I hit them sub buttons, you know, just one, two, three, four, five. Not that hard. Maybe four of us. If you don't want to review to jo uh, Josh Reviews Inks, I get it. I'm not an anime guy either. But at least four I out of five. Up. Sub up. Amen. Sub these people. <laughs> You should do a I'm video, so though, Josh. What if Goosebumps was an anime? That's your next what if video. There you go. You're welcome. All right. That's it. I'm out.